We are in production mode at Shakespeare and the Vines, so if you hear any noise in the background of this recording, it's because we're busy building costumes and other things, for which this bench is a set piece. Here I'm cutting some 2x12 into smaller manageable pieces. It was a 2x12x8. The bench is going to end up being 32 inches long and 18 inches high. I wanted it a little longer, but the knots in the wood, and in fact the quality of the wood, was not all that good. It came from the local big box hardware store, and they don't sell kiln dried or high quality lumber, they only sell construction grade lumber. Uh, but fortunately it was soft wood, it's pine, Douglas fir in fact, easy to work with. But here I'm cutting the legs. I just cut the top and I'm cutting the legs now for the bench. And I get to start uh, flattening the bottom side of the bench. And then later I'm going to actually shape it to a different shape. The wood was difficult to plane. It, being close to the heart like it was, the grain was going all over the place. Then I used my marking gauge to mark out the tenons to the depth that they were going to be. I wanted them to be quite proud of the top of the bench so that I could have enough to saw off and then smooth in. Once I got them marked out, I cut the tenons down. I removed the waste on the outside of two tenons with the handsaw. I, this time I learned my lesson and didn't go all the way to the line in cutting the boards. I broke out the final fibers and then used a chisel to clean them up. But for the inside of the tenon, tenons, we have to go to the bandsaw, where I did the standard crisscross cut and then cleaned up. Then I cut a shoulder into the tenons. It was five millimeters. And I say five millimeters because the calipers that I was using, the depth gauge on the calipers, it was easier for me to read in millimeters than in tenths of an inch. After I chopped off the bulk of the shoulder, I used a skewed shoulder plane to finish off the tenons. And then I squared up the bottoms. Afterwards, I decided I was going to cut a housing dado in the bottom of the bench top so that the legs could sit up into something and give them a little bit more stability. This was also done to a depth of, this was done to a depth of three millimeters. Almost there. Now, I probably should have used my power router for this, but I wanted to use the hand router that I had built. And it had worked well on other projects, but on this still slightly green and very fibrous Douglas fir, it just didn't produce a very smooth interior surface. Fortunately, this was going to be glued, so the rougher surface worked out for me. That was also to a depth, yeah, of three millimeters. Then I began chopping out the mortises in the top of the bench. This was a very long job this time because they were wider than the chisels I had and because the wood was so green that it just didn't want to move. It wanted to smoosh. Even when I sharpened and honed my chisels down to 6,000 grit and could shave the hair off my arm with it, it still wanted to squash the fibers rather than cut them. Then I took the legs to the bandsaw to give them a, something of an interesting shape. And because of the length of time it took me to chop those mortises out, I thought that this time I would hog out the bulk of the mortises for the stretcher with my brace and bit and then clear it up. At least they're wider and they're narrower than the width of the 2x6 that I'm going to be using as a stretcher. Their current width is one and a quarter. It gives me about an eighth of an inch on either side. I use a dark colored epoxy uh, that's much stronger than the stuff I usually use, and it will 
not take away from the look of the wood, but I have to get these things filled. This was another problem with the green wood. It cracked after I'd cut it. It was as if a million woodworkers cried out in agony, not epoxy, butterfly splines. I am still, of course, going to epoxy the checks, but the butterfly spline is going to do the work of holding it together, even if the epoxy fails. So I cut out quite a few of these, drew in the lines, knifed in the lines, really. And then went to them with the power router. And a little bit of refining. And look at that, it fits just fine. So for the glue up. Now I also used my marking gauge set to the width of my one and a quarter inch chisel and at a depth of one eighth of an inch from the edge to mark the tenons. Then I made sure that I cut them down to the lines, as you will hear in just a second. That is what I'm saying. And I could not find my Japanese, my, my double-bladed saw anywhere. I think I locked it away in a box again overnight and forgot to get it out. So I had to use this old, nearly toothless pole saw. If I had a table saw running, I would just take this to the table saw. But to don't, so I get to plane this. At barely an eighth of an inch, I didn't even try to chisel out the mortises or the tenons. I just hogged it out with the, the shoulder plane. That thing. Why do I have a farrier's rest? Good. I was planning on using it in my blacksmithing. It's working out great for this. I had to go ahead and epoxy this top, and because uh, it was cracking really badly, there were some through cracks on these te on these uh, ends of these mortises. But I'm still putting in the butterfly splines to complete the look. I already cut this one out. I'm ready to finish the lines, but I'm about to go on this one right now. I'm getting pretty good at that. And then a little bit of refining of the edges. And then they were glued in. I used a thickened epoxy. And I get to cut off the proud bits of the tenons to the top. You'll also see a little bit of stain there. I can sand that down, sand that smooth. And here I am coming up with my final solution for the checks in the end of the board using steel. This is 16th inch mild steel that I'm going to fire up in the forge to get a little scale on it and give it that hammered look. Then I used concrete nails to fasten the metal onto the ends of the bench. This will effectively hold those checks in place. You can see the scale texture there. And that check is really important because even after I epoxied it once, it's still split again. So these straps are going to be holding things nice and secure. And there's the bench after a final coat of stain. That's penetrating dark walnut stain. It is going to receive a three coats of spar varnish to protect it from the weather. And as I said, this bench is going to be used in an upcoming production of King Lear, produced by Shakespeare and the Vines. If you enjoyed this video, like, comment, and subscribe. 
See future videos if you subscribe and make sure to click that little notification icon. And here are some other videos that I think you will enjoy. Thank you for watching.